Okay, well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And as you probably realize by now, I do like my bikes. Um, having owned bikes since I was around 11 when I first got one, an off-road bike. And uh, many of you have been asking, well, when am I gonna do a bike video? Now, the trouble is, living in the UK, the winter months really aren't great for biking. Um, They've been, particularly this year, it's been really frosty, loads of ice around, loads of salt, and that's just a no-no on a bike as far as I'm concerned. But back in May 2015, I did a bit of an adventure on this bike, and uh, I took the cameras along, but when we got back, we looked at it, and the audio isn't great. Um, we've upgraded the audio since, but on this particular adventure, it wasn't great. It was 1,500 kilometers out in the Pyrenees. Um, but we've had another look. It's really bugged me that it's just sat on the shelf uh, for nearly two years. But we've had another look, done an edit on it, and we're gonna pick it up now when I'm outside the house telling you a bit more about this bike. Uh, this is my Beta 450R. This is the bike I generally hoon around the farm in and behave generally very badly on. Um, huge fun. Um, it's quite a lot of horsepower. It's the same horsepower actually as the Africa Twin, the 650 there. This is 450. It's about 53, 54 horsepower. This weighs about 117 kilos, um, so it's a bit of an animal, uh, but not quite as much of an animal as a 450 KTM because it's got something called multi link suspension. See all underneath there, it's all all very techy just underneath the swinging arm and that actually keeps two wheels on the ground rather more than the KTM 450. Now you'll see some bags on the back because I'm about to have a rather a big adventure on this bike because tomorrow morning it's getting packed on a van I'm going to be taken down just south of Perpignan which is on the French um, Spanish border because I'm joining two friends uh, we're right on the we're going to start on the coast of the Mediterranean and then ride over the Pyrenees right across until we hit the Atlantic and the basic plan is we're not going to use roads away across it's about 1500 kilometers um, we might have to use a bit of road we reckon about 100 kilometers of road in all in you're going to join me so next time you'll see me we'll be on a beach somewhere in the Mediterranean in a couple of days time see you then okay well the bikes arrived last night we're in Coulure, this lovely French town right by the Mediterranean, as you can see behind me. It's about eight o'clock in the morning, we're just having the, uh, coffee in the morning just to set us all off before we go, before this big trip. Now this, this bike trip, what we're actually trying to do, we're trying to ride from the Mediterranean across to the Atlantic, um, across the Pyrenees basically, without using roads. It's a trip of about 1,500 kilometers. It's a bit daft. It came about from talking to a mate in my village uh, down the pub who sort of I said, why don't we do an adventure? We both had enduro bikes. Why don't we do a bit of an adventure? He said, and he said, well, I've got a mate who says this really fantastic trip which you dried across the Pyrenees. Why don't we do that? That was a few weeks ago. Here we are. It's a bit more serious than I ever envisaged. Um, fortunately, Jeremy, your meet is our, basically our leader, um, because he does these sort of desert raid things all the time, and he has all the sat-nav on his bike, which is just crazy. We've just got to keep up. I've got no sat-nav on mine. Um, John, my other partner, who's, uh, who's from the village, has, has bought a Garmin, so we've got two navigation devices, and that's it. But the, basically what we're trying to do, the Brachel in France did some routes. If you want to just come down to the map here, um, Couleur is right on the coast here, so this is Mediterranean coast here, and you follow this red route along, um, that is the route we're trying to do, but we really wanted to get up to the Atlantic up here, so we're doing a second route to take us on that bit. The little bit that worries me is, according to these notes, this should take seven to nine days, and then you've got to do this bit. But we're not doing that, we're trying to do it in five days. So we're here, and these are our legs as we go through. It's around 300 kilometers a day, but you've got to remember this is all off-road on these crazy bikes that we have to pack uh, all our stuff on. Um, there's no space for anything. Um, and if you want, actually, the, the basic um, gist is it, these, these bikes only do about 100 kilometers on fuel. So it's where the fuel stops are, how it's all going to work, I don't know. Um, I've got a slight cold, so apologies for the voice. I've no idea how this is going to turn out, how rough the tracks are, what's going to happen, but you're going to join us, we're going to have our coffees, and then we're off. See you in a bit. Okay, go. We'll get out. You done? Yeah, we're done.
closer now. Still milling around. Every now and then we think leads in traffic. You just can't believe it on a little lane like this. Follow him because he's got the sack now. I also can't believe how easy it would be to get lost out here. No idea where they are. So you see just the, got the exhaust on the bike in front and on the left hand side this alloy thing. That's his spare petrol tank. It's kind of cheating. I can go about a hundred kilometers and he can do just over three hundred. Sign of snow on top of the mountains up there. Right, slight dilemma. Um, a very scenic spot, and we're really enjoying ourselves, but um, we're fast running out of fuel. These bikes, well, mine only holds eight and a half litres. We've done about a, uh, just over 100 kilometres, um, and we're getting a bit marginal. I've got a two litre can. Um, but uh, yeah, we're trying to decide where to get fuel. We haven't seen any fuel stops yet, and we sort of see the places we're in. Well, you can guess why. So yeah, I don't know what the locals do for fuel. They all have their own oil well pot in the garden or something. We'll find one, even if we have to borrow it from someone with our siphon. fuel would be marginal and so it's proving. Um, I've gone on to reserve now, we've put the two litres in and we're now on reserve and we're just desperately trying to find a petrol station. Um, we're not having a lot of luck, uh, I think I might be getting to know the scenery here for a little longer. Very pretty around here, I don't want to spend the night here though. Oh well, we're almost there, no I've got a can, that's fine. day one 300 kilometers just about all off-road uh, and some of it pretty damn extreme as far as I'm concerned. Yes, I'm trying to follow a guy who's just come back from the Libyan rally uh, and thinks that the Paris Dakar is for, for girls. Um, that was a bit of a mistake. He's, um, he's quite full-on and he was telling me the first day of the Libyan rally was 800 kilometers so today's 300 is nothing. I feel like I've done a marathon. Um, super tough, running out of fuel isn't fun, we're going to have to watch that tomorrow. Um, bikes stood up pretty well apart from that, but it's just fuel when you're up in the hills, it's next to impossible. And we're actually just going to try and fuel them up here. I can't get over it's empty up there as well. Uh, didn't meet another biker really on the trail. Um, and now it's just a matter of six o'clock, so we've taken about um, 10 hours, 12 hours to get here. Incredible experience. We're going to uh, get our kit, which isn't very much, uh, go and find something to eat. Yeah. See you later. Well, morning. It's the second day of this trip. Um, I think before we go into the second day, it's worth just explaining how it went yesterday um, because the surprises kept coming. Um, you know, we left 
Kalur, not really knowing what to expect. We had this great run out of Kalur. It was sort of tarmac to begin with and then a few sort of friendly tracks that were no real problem. And then suddenly you'll fall into, you're taking a turn, a random turn, and it's, you think it's going to be sand, and then no, it turns into real rock, and then you're under the trees, and then, then it's a really challenging run. run. And it's, I sort of use the ski analogy. When you start at the day and you start down a track, you have no idea if it's a green run, red run or a black run. Uh, and some of the black runs are pretty extreme. And on an enduro bike, the whole thing to do is just to keep going at it, really attack it. Don't worry about the rocks. If you sort of concentrate on the bigger rocks underneath it, you, you'll just stop. You've just got to fly through it and keep that confidence. And it helps sort of having Jeremy out the front, who's this desert raid fanatic. Because he's just charging up. He's, he's got Olin suspension all over his bike. I'm pretty jealous of that now because it just seems to glide over and mine's still fighting and bucking. Jeremy's not here at the moment because he's up at the breakfast table and he and he's this this thing if you go into here, he highlights it. So he's he's running through the, the roadmap. This is how we get about. And you'll see these put green for right, left um, is red, and he's marking right through the map. So breakfast time is always Jeremy with glasses on and his highlighters. It's like, like a sort of you've got a, this baby with you has to have colouring in at breakfast, but actually it's, it's pretty serious stuff. So he's doing that. We're going to get packed up and then we'll get going in about five minutes' time. What he's doing now, just scrolling through, seeing what the next thing he's going to check for. Lots. Lots of green and lots of red. Lots of scenic place to stop today uh, having some lunch. Uh, what's remarkable on this journey is how hot it is. Uh, today is forecast to be in the 30s and that's what it sort of feels like. Just stop for lunch. I'm cooking because yeah, one of the slight downsides of uh, doing this sort of bike trip is you have to wear all the gear and all the protective gear. We've, uh, John and I have bought jackets with all the sort of really hard padding inside them and then you've got the big motocross boots and I've got ski socks on as well so we're sort of struggling. Fortunately these jackets and I've got some something called Dakar trousers they've got all these vents in it etc so you can open the vents and when you get up to speed it's okay but you spend quite a lot of time at lowest speed and now the bike well we stopped a couple of times just on sort of navigation and viewing points and it started to spew out water so even the bikes are starting to boil up in this sort of 30 degree heat. Yeah put it in how much are we going to get in there? Oh god. They don't hold much at the best of times, do they? Is that it? Is that it? Can you see it? That's yeah. quite empty, isn't it? I think we found the reason for the overheating. We were just taking the guard off the radiator, and there's all this sort of. I'm oh, sure that's from the farm in Burford. Not needed today. It's end of day two, um, just got to the hotel, lovely hotel by the lake, it's all very lovely. Um, but uh, today was even tougher than yesterday and uh, having a little bit of a uh, reassessment, having a bit of a wobble to be truthful. Yesterday, total elevation, we've got these garments that tell us exactly what we've done. Uh, today was 280 kilometres, total elevation for the day was um, 7,900 metres. Uh, yesterday was 68 and that was really tough. Um, there were some intense sections of rock today. Um, the bikes, it's so hot here. Um, we're in the 30 degree mark. I've, I'm sweating buckets. I'm drinking like there's no tomorrow. Uh, Jerry, I mean, he's got through four or five litres of water and he's come uh, back today. I'm, I'm about three litres or something, but uh, 
it's pretty bloody intense trying to dry, ride enduro bikes across the Pyrenees, coast to coast, I'm fast discovering, especially when your lead man um, does a couple of desert events a year and is a full-on bike man, fabulous guy to do the navigation, so experienced. But he does not want to stop. He does not want to stop for anything. And we keep going and you're, you're just desperately trying to get the camel to have a, have a drink or something. And you, you just touch him and he's roaring off. And he's very keen to keep that average speed up. We're meant to be doing 50 kilometres an hour off-road. We're about 37 kilometres off-road. And when you see some of the sections we've been on, I mean, 30 miles an hour up some of those slopes. I mean, I had one today where actually... Uh, I, I stored, I was in second, it was super rocky and I had to do a bloody hill start, it's really annoying. And it's just a few mistakes were sort of starting to creep in, um, just from tiredness, got my arm pump as well. Um, 250, 300 kilometres a day off road on rocks I'm firing is a big ass. I admire hugely my companions. John, he's, um, he's an ex-bike racer so just loves bikes, he's super fit, I'm not super fit. Um, I like bikes and I like riding off road, but I am sort of finding my limits. I'm in a bit of a wobble moment at the moment. Let's we'll see what the morning brings. We've got to be able to catch up and do what we want to do. I've got an early start, so let's see what the morning brings at the moment. <sighs> Ready for a shower, reassess, and go from there. Okay, morning. This is uh, day four of this trip. Um, we're just having, doing the bike service at the moment before we set off. It's just after seven o'clock in the morning. Um, you might have to drill going in the background. Um, you're probably wondering where day three went. Well, what happened was, after um, a pretty epic day two, my arms cried enough, and uh, I didn't actually go on the full off-road trip on day three. I called it a rest day, and did a trip on road uh, from Tremp to Esker, where we're staying tonight. Uh, the other guys did, and it turned into a bit of an epic. We're just doing a yeah, trying to do a service of bikes in a, in a public square, as you can see, it's quite busy. It was all right um, a few moments ago, but it seems everybody's now just decided to get up. Uh, I'll just show you on the map where we are. Okay. So, I set off from Tremp here, just south of Andorra's up there, Tremp, and came across some beautiful roads all the way to Esca here. The other, the other guys sort of did this and it turned into a bit of an epic. It was about 12 hours in the saddle, 360 kilometers, uh, and they were absolutely shot by the time they reached the hotel last night. Today, we're off, sort of up into the hills this way again, just south of the Pyrenees, um, so Esca, and sort of ending up Pamplona area. So, so Dika is sort of the end of the trip, uh, of the first road book, and then we go into another road book over there. Anyway, we're going to crack on, and I'm sure you'll catch all this later. Uh, we've come to a premature halt this morning, because as soon as we set off, we saw that the lead bike actually, we have these mooses, as they're called, in the tyres, so no inner tube, like a solid inner tube replacement. Uh, but they fail if they overheat, and obviously Jeremy's must have overheated on the road last night, so we're, we've stopped at a motorbike place, and we're actually going to put a tube in it. This is uh, trying to grab a bit of water at a camelback as well when it's all going on. But uh, this must have been 20 kilometers like this now without a stop. Oh, it's so hot, it's about 30 degrees, 32 degrees. Oh, dear me. Oh, it's like the might be lost. That's good. Oh, no, at least spotting me can set off again. Oh, have a good one. Try and get through them. Take ruts. The other thing is, 
thing we always got to be conscious of is someone coming the other way. We've got another nutter motorbike. Fine, if I go too close, I'm in the dust and I miss the ruts. Like happened back there, I missed them. I just got in the dust and found myself in a deep rut. Cheers, I'm moaning if it's too hot. But oh, imagine if it was raining. That would be worse by a factor of 10. Over. Bikers as well, just left a, a puddle there. There's no fans on the radiators unless you go for desert spec. Actually, Jeremy has fans on his rad. I don't. Looks like another technical section. Jeremy's been super careful with his front tyre because obviously he's lost the moose and he's on it. Inflated tyre, and if he gets a puncture, we decided that we abandon him, get down to the road, take one of our wheels off, and come and fetch him. Not great. So we're not going to do it. We're not just not going to have a puncture. That's the sort of rain they must have here to make these gullies. This is the fifth day and the final day of this trip and we're pretty excited because by the close of play today we'll be looking, having a wheel in the Atlantic Ocean. Not the whole bike submerged, just the front wheel we hope. Because if we come down and look at the route, yesterday was pretty spectacular. We came through it, it felt like Tuscany. Um, incredible rock formations. We stayed just in the middle of nowhere. I've got a green dot to show you. I can't even give you a town of where we actually are. But we now follow um, Jeremy's pink dotted line across. This is going to be quite exciting because we're actually going over the Pyrenees proper so we're going to see a bit more altitude um, today as we go over the top. Then we, we might go off piece if we see something spectacular as well. We don't know really what to expect on this route because we're sort of making it up as we go along and at the end we then got a road trip down to the hotel which is right on the beach, close a play, some Sondaloos. It's going to be really spectacular when we're down there and it will be accumulation of a pretty momentous trip. I think it's, um, it's about 8 o'clock in the morning, it's time to get going because there's going to be quite a few kilometres to cover today, so I'll see you later. Thank <laughs> you. 
for lunch at a pretty crucial place because it's we're in Saint Jean Pierre de Port, which is the end of our roadbook. If I look at um, Jeremy's bike, oh, squeeze through, you'll see here. This is what we've been following coming down here, coming down here. We go into the town. That is the end, the Brachon end of route there. So a bit of a momentous moment, which is a good job if you look at um, Jeremy's tyres, completely shot, and the rear is when you start seeing the tarmac is actually hitting there, that's the end of it. Amazing that the bikes have got round. I have to say they're so tough these things. They do make packing a bit tricky. All I can get in there is a pair of shoes and my camera. Toolkit in there. Uh, a two litre can of fuel in there that we've used pretty regularly as a spare with a can of some energy bars in there and that's it. Anyway, we're just going to uh, quick stop, have some lunch and then we're off down to the Atlantic. It's a place called Hende, right on the Atlantic coast in France, and it is chucking down. Um, I expected to sort of go through the, uh, the tour at this point, but it really is too wet to do that. It's been incredible, it's been 1500 kilometres. The tracks, if you're ever thinking of doing this sort of thing yourself, be aware that you have no idea if the tracks are going to be easy, really hard, or next to impossible as you go down them. It's incredible fun though. Uh, the variety, the scenery, it's all spectacular, uh, but the best sort of bike to do it on is super lightweight Enduros like this. If you've got a BMW GS or something like that, be aware you're not going to be able to do all the tracks and you're going to have to abandon them. Although I have to say it's been easier at the Atlantic end of this trip um, than the other end. Around Andorra, super tough tracks there. We, these were absolutely ace, just on rock and the views, it was epic. Um, I hope you enjoyed this Harry's Garage special. I've never done one on a bike before, it's pretty hard to um, video, I have to say, compared to cars, because you're not in a nice little cabin and you can't do that, you've got your crash out on, and we are hammering on trying to do that many kilometres a day. hope you enjoyed it, keep watching, keep subscribing, see you again soon. <laughs>